Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by plants. plants. Today we bring to you episode 294, The Pros and Cons of Canada's Food Guide. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, Adam and I are talking about the pros and cons of the food guide. Of course, the food guide has changed in January here in Canada. The government put out a new food guide for the first time in a very long time. And there were some amazing changes that we, of course, love because it promotes plant-based. Yeah, and so we talk about a lot of different things in this episode. We really focus on how the food guide has changed here in Canada and a little bit about the impact it has made worldwide because it has made an impact, has stirred some pots, and it is getting no a lot intended. of press. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit. You'll hear what the food guide focuses on. We even get into some of the downfalls that we think the food guide has. And we also talk about why we think Canada is starting to recommend more plant-based options. And we finish it off giving you some great easy swaps that you can use when you want to become more plant-based. We've been waiting a while to put this podcast out. We were going to do it in January, but then we said, well, March is nutrition, nutrition month. month. So, so we waited. It yeah. yeah. So it's coming to you now in March and it's episode 294. So if you want to get the show notes and see it because you can't see it while you're riding your bike or out on a run, just visit our show notes at planttrainers.com slash 294 to get all the information there. And be sure to check out the information that we put out and follow us at Plant Trainers on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook because there are some great things happening there and we don't want you to miss out on that either. We want to thank everyone for their support with the Yummy Foods Activity Book for Kids that we recently published and is now available on Amazon and Kindle. We know it's being used in homeschooling programs as community outreach materials, as well as a way to keep kids busy learning and having fun without electronics. We wanted to share a few testimonials. Happy customers have left. And this one's from Jessica. I love learning about new foods. Still being a fairly new vegan family, I would love for them to learn even more. I was pleasantly surprised when we received the workbooks and every one of my children, ages 1, 3, 8, 10, 12, and 16, took interest. Wow. Well done, Shoshana and Adam. This book is interesting, fun, informative, and I feel good about the fact that my kids are not only wanting to play with it, but they are learning at the same time. Win-win. This one's from Timothy. The recipe activities are great. No stress. It's a way to bond with your kids in the kitchen and teach basic kitchen skills. I recommend it for homeschooling, church-based programs, and presentations to elementary school kids. The worksheets can also be used as fun activities to test basic food literacy knowledge in adult-based presentations. To get yourself or a young one a copy, visit the link in our show notes, which is planttrainers.com slash yummy foods, or search yummy foods on your country's Amazon site. And now for a moment of gratitude. So I was listening to a Gary V episode the other day, and he was saying that there are so many doubters out there that are going to doubt you, that you need to show up and you need to be your biggest fan. And I think it's nutrition month. I think we're talking about the food guide today. And some of you out there have made amazing, amazing progress and changes in your life. And some of you are still sitting on the sidelines waiting to take that leap. And I, I'm grateful that I heard that so that I could share this information with you of be your biggest fan, be your biggest supporter. There's enough people who might doubt you out there that you don't need any more doubting. So any leap that you want to make, go ahead and make it. And yes, I listened to Gary Vee. And yes, I wish he swore more. I mean less. <laughs> yes, I wish he swore less. <laughs> I'm grateful for the fact that this food guide came out and it's promoting a more plant-based lifestyle, which in turn has had the people around me asking me more questions, coming up and expressing to me that they've started to eat more plants or they're now plant-based. They don't eat any more animal products. Times are changing. Things are changing. People are going to change. It's going to take time, but we're going to become a healthier society. So I'm very grateful that this is all happening right now. 
Okay, so I never really know how to start these podcasts when we're not interviewing someone. Well, it's, we just get started right into it. So we, today, what are we talking about? We are talking about Canada's food guide. Big buzz. We have a lot of neighbors to the south of us who are quite jealous with a lot of the changes that have been made in our food guide. And we're going to talk a little bit about what those changes are. And we're also going to talk about some of the good stuff, but also some of the not good stuff. I'd start off by saying this is pretty groundbreaking stuff that's having an impact globally, not just to the people south of us, not just to Canadians, but everybody in the world has heard that Canada's food guide has been updated and there have been some pretty significant changes that are now being talked about all over the world. So let's talk about it a little bit with our listeners and share our thoughts and see how this goes. Sure. So before the food guide looked very similar to a rainbow or to to the regular food guide pyramid that we had even before that. And basically it was telling you how many servings of each food group that you need to eat that day. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think people need to have an idea of, okay, I need to have this many fruits and vegetables in a day and this many grains. Hmm, the fruits and vegetables are supposed to outweigh the grains. Like, I don't think that that's a bad thing, but there was there was really a concentration on animal products. Dairy was its own food group. Um, meats and fats were all animal containings. Anything like tofu or beans or nuts were considered alternatives. And the vocabulary around it was really, I mean, you could really tell who the government was in bed with when they wrote it because it was really a big promotion of the meat and dairy industry before. And there wasn't a lot about lifestyle. It was very based just on There was a little bit, but it was mostly based on food. And what I think I should do is in the show notes of planttrainers.com slash 294, I'll post a picture of the cover of the old Canada's food guide and I'll also post a picture of the new one so people can kind of see what you're talking about when you talk about that colored rainbow or there's four food groups that used to be there that are no longer emphasized. Right. So now what we're doing here in Canada is we're concentrating on each plate. So it doesn't matter if you're eating a snack or if you're eating a meal. They really want you to make sure that you're visualizing what your plate should look like and creating it that way. So I think that visual effect really helps people. So it says half your plate should be fruits and vegetables. A quarter of your plate should be whole grains and the other part should be protein. Right. And that's not much different from what they were doing in the US when they started talking about the my plate, right? They broke down the plate into different sections and they had the different food. But I think Canada is starting to take it to a new level now with how they've gone even further. Yeah. So when we did eliminate those food groups, you know, again, it's not like our children are going to school and look, the chains are eating alternatives, you know, like the word alternative had kind of like a negative connotation. And we'll talk a little bit more about language and the language that's being used and how it was used before and after. But, you know, they want they're saying choose protein. So we have this protein portion of the plate. And, you know, Adam and I kind of looked at each other and rolled our eyes and we're like, protein at the end of the day it's a macronutrient on purpose we it needs to be part of our diet but it does say choose proteins that come from plants more often oh if you go to the food guide and you look at the plate and you count the amount of animal-based proteins in the protein section and the plant-based proteins in the protein section the plant-based proteins outweigh the animal protein and that's really great. Yeah, that's a huge shift from what it used to be because it used to be very focused on the meat, very focused on the dairy. And those used to be the primary sources of protein that the food guide was recommending. Whereas now, right on the cover, it says, choose proteins that come from plants more often. So we really love that. And we love the language that they've used because they've used choose. Not maybe, you know, like it, it's very, it's very, it's really telling you what you should do. You should choose proteins that come from plants more often. You should choose whole grains, have plenty of fruits and vegetables. So there's less emphasis on isolating nutrients, but, you know, we're kind of breaking it up into three different areas still, but it, it works for us. But this language that they're using, it it's much more 
you know, it, it tells people what to do. So, you know, before it used to say include small amounts of saturated fat every day. So when I hear include small amounts of saturated fat, where my brain goes is, okay, so I should have saturated fats every day. And if I should include it, maybe they're good. So maybe I should have a little bit more. So I go and I'm going to be putting more unsaturated fats into my diet more often or make at least half your grain products whole grains. Well, if you tell someone to only make half their grain products whole grains, we know that they're going to do a little bit less than that. When we use that kind of language where we're opening up the doors for people to take it a little bit past. So now that they're saying choose whole grains, period, end of sentence, there's no talk of not whole grains. So if you're not going to go the full extreme, maybe you're going to get to 60% whole grains instead of 100%. Well, that's a lot better than before when you're only doing 5% whole grains. You know what I mean? The, the language is a lot more positive and it really helps people understand what they should be doing. Choose water as your drink, where before it said, try not to choose drinks that are as sugary. I love that they focused more on drinking water as the source of hydration. I mean, our bodies are made up of about 70% water anyway, so it makes perfect sense. But it's there's no more focus on drinking the juice and the sugary drinks. And I think that's huge. They even go as far to say, replace your sugary drinks with water. And that's one thing that a lot of us in Canada especially don't drink enough of, and that's just water, especially through the winter. We don't focus on drinking enough. We think, you know, it's not hot outside. We don't need the water. We're okay. But we actually need to drink a lot of water. And that became a foundation as one of the, as one of the pillars for the food guide. And it's really important, and it should be a pillar. It talks about sodium as well, where before when I said it said, you know, use small amounts of unsaturated fat. Well, small amounts can mean large amounts, but here they're saying limit foods high in sodium, which really makes you think, okay, is this food even high in sodium? So it really gets you thinking. So although there's been a lot of, and we'll talk a little bit more about the downfall of it later, there's been a lot of criticism of like, okay, it's telling us to do these things, but is it using the vocabulary properly or do we really understand it's a stepping stone, right? Like it's a definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah. And I think we need to remember that it's a guide, right? It's not do this. You have to do this to be healthy. It's not a law. It, it's something that's supposed to guide us. And I think that the new guidelines are set up in a way to help Canadians be a little more healthy and a little more successful at developing healthier habits. And their main focus really came down to healthy living and changing our perspective on what exactly that means. And rather than being so sick as a Canadian society, we're trying to get people to see what's going on and understand how sick we're getting simply by the food that we're consuming. So right there in the food guide, it says heart disease is the number one leading cause of death in Canada. And that's why it's made so many of the changes that it's made. We need to get, we need to move away from this. So understanding that weight may or may not have an impact on this, but the foods that we eat do and the way that we act while we eat or in the way that we prepare ourselves to eat and the food choices that we make really have an impact on this. Is it too late for the older generations who don't maybe take advantage of finding other information like this podcast and other things like that that are out there? I don't know what effect just the food guide alone is going to have on the rest of society, but the way that it's going to start to be taught in schools is going to have well, a major gonna effect. that's going to be huge. Yeah, that's going to be huge. And as a teacher, we both know that the food guide's been taught in high school here, and we've been told and expected to teach the old food guide and talk about dairy and meat and how it's beneficial when we know that's not the case, which is why if anyone government is listening, <laughs> please do not act on this. But that's why when I taught nutrition in my classes, I didn't really focus on what the food guide was providing because I didn't believe in it. Whereas now I could take the new food guide into the classroom a little bit more and talk to what Canada is really promoting, and that's eating more plants, drinking more water, being more active. And those are three key points that will enable Canadians and everybody else in the world who sees it 
take the right steps to build healthier habits to become a healthier society and be more successful at what they're going to be doing in solving, resolving, reversing, stopping certain illnesses and diseases. So I think you just hit the nail on the head, you know, as opposed to only concentrating on what foods you're choosing to put in your mouth, there's a really big emphasis on healthy habits now. So on page two of that main page of the food guide, it talks about being mindful of your eating habits. Now, whether or not they've used the word mindful properly, I'm not 100% sure yet how I feel about that. But, you know, if if you're just paying attention to yourself and your eating habits, it's, it's not saying, you know, feel bad about choosing a bag of chips or feel like you're better than everybody else because you chose an apple, but just, you know, pay attention to what you are eating and the times a day that you're eating it and how often you're eating it. It's going to help you make decisions going further. Cook more often. Like that is not something that we ever saw in the food guide before. So it's telling you to make your food from scratch, right? Or figure, you know, figure out what's going into everything because you're doing it. Enjoy your food. Take the time to actually sit and put it in your mouth and know what you're doing as opposed to sitting in front of the television and not even know that you're eating. You know, maybe it's not the best choice all the time, but still you know, have a relationship with the food that you're eating because that might encourage you to eat a little bit better the next time too and eating with others, right? Going back to that television or, you know, not eating in front of the television or sitting as a family. It's really, you know, when you really think about this stuff, this is stuff that existed 60, 70, 80 years ago, um, you know, at the beginning of when society started to go out of control because there wasn't social media and not every child was over-programmed and people weren't, working hard to try to keep up with the Joneses as much to have the flashy cars and and the vacations to be able to put it on social media. People kind of came together at the end of the day to enjoy food together. It's almost like the food guide needs to be renamed into a wellness guide, I think, because they really started focusing on building healthy habits. And when you're mindful about what you're putting in your mouth and you cook more at home, and you're enjoying what you're cooking, eating meals with others, you're reading the food labels, you're limiting those high sugar, sodium, saturated fat foods, and you're becoming more aware of food marketing, what we're really doing is developing healthier habits to put ourselves in a position to make better choices and to live healthier lives. So I'm thinking maybe they need to rename it. I don't know. Well, then, then they'd be missing a few areas like stress management. Right. And, you know, like, they would. Yeah, hobbies, you know, self-care. But I'd like to think that our government isn't stopping here and that this is a stepping stone into something bigger that can come out in another five or 10 years just to kind of get people's heads around not using lard as their main cooking oil or, you know, not always having to choose meat or being more apt to choosing vegetarian or vegan meals. I I think it's a huge step in the right direction. And I think that our kids are going to benefit greatly from this happening now, more so than the older generations, because it's going to be much more accepted. Now that they announced plants, eat more plants, it's going to be more widely accepted as a proper source of all kinds of vitamins and minerals. And I think kids going to school and being taught to read food labels and to sit together as a family and then come home and try to impose that on the family is going, I, I think it's our children that are going to make the biggest impact on those older generations more than just the food guide alone. So when we talk about, you know, grassroots, I think that this is a great opportunity. You know, not everybody's going to run with the plant-based, but it's going to be that much more accepted. And when you go home to your families for for Christmas dinner and say, sorry, we don't eat meat anymore. And they go, what? How can you live without meat? And you're like, well, you know, the food guide says choose plants more often. Tofu is an acceptable source of protein and you know nuts and seeds and legumes are an acceptable source of protein and look whole grains like quinoa and barley and you know brown rice are right here on the plate in the middle of the food guide then it's a little bit more accepted by everybody else around you and they'll know that you're not just going to screw your kids up by feeding them this way (laughs) and i I don't think people are just going to all of a sudden start becoming plant-based completely I think that people are still going to eat what they eat, but this being an official document that is a guideline promoting eating more plants is certainly going to make a huge impact on the people that 
I guess, find the document, read it, and learn about it. And it's going to have a big ripple effect moving forward. There's so much more great information coming your way. But before we get to that, we wanted to share with you our three personal complaints that we have about cookbooks. And maybe you've heard this before, but sometimes we just don't know where to get the ingredients. Sometimes we buy an ingredient and we use so little of it that we have so much left over. What a waste for so many reasons. And number three, you know that if there's no picture, I'm not making it. I want to see how they made it so that I could change it in my mind and make it exactly how I want it. And a bonus complaint is that we're just busy. I don't have time to spend three hours making some kind of fluffy thing that's not going to turn out properly. So that's why we created the Easy Recipes for Busy Parent cookbook. That's why we created the Easy Recipes for Busy Parents. This cookbook promises that you will find all the ingredients in no time, that we will use the same ingredients over and over again so that you don't have a lot of wastage or any wastage at all, and it'll be easy and there will be pictures for every single recipe. If that's good enough for you, check out the link in the show notes or go to plantrainers.com slash shop and get your cookbook today. And now back to the show. So maybe I wasn't clear. My point before was that for the families that already are plant-based or are becoming plant-based, no matter what the food guide says, when they bring it to their extended family, the extended family can possibly be a little bit more accepting of it because there's documents. Right belonging to the government that's supporting it. So I think that helps. So yes, this is amazing. There's celebrations going on. Lots of people are happy. Lots of people are upset. But, you know, even for us, you know, who see the word plant-based in there and we're all doing our happy dance or our floss or whatever, um, there are some downfalls to the guide as well. But I think that I can overlook them and just be grateful for the changes that have been made already. So for example, it says half of your plate, fruits and vegetables. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to see that and they're just going to go the fruit route, right? They're just going to say, okay, I don't really like vegetables. I love fruit. And they're going to start, you know, eating more fruit and not eating more vegetables. Is that going to have a big impact on their health going forward like it could if they were putting greens and other vegetables in there? No, not necessarily, but maybe... It'll depend. Well, right. Well, if, if you're replacing that with... if. If the fruit's taking over from the burgers, right, then, or the french fries, then we're definitely getting somewhere. But we still need to make sure that it's not just fruit or vegetables. Vegetables is a must. Vegetables Mm -hmm. have to be there. And there's a lot of haters out there who are saying, people are going to choose too much fruit and they're going to have too much sugar. I I mean, if you listen to this podcast, you know that's, that's not true. But I think that what we need to do is make sure that people understand the importance of vegetables and that it shouldn't just be an either or. However, if it's better than what you're doing now, all the more power to you. Yeah. The thing that I didn't love about the guide is actually the recipes that are attached to it. And I think some of those recipes didn't really pay much attention to what they were promoting in the guide. And they were pretty heavy on the animal products. Which want, is kind of strange. I want to put a shout out to my friend Erin, Prep Teach 101 on Instagram, I think. And she was the first one. You know, I, I she sent me a message and I said, she said, congratulations. And I didn't know what she was talking about. I'm like, on the food guide? Like, why are you congratulating me? And it was for something else. And then she's like, oh, yeah, food guide. And three hours later, she got back to me saying, but did you see the recipes? Why didn't they commission you guys to make the recipes for the food guide? And when I went to check it out, it's really, really heavily based on animal products, a lot of meat, a lot of dairy. And I think that there's a lot of unhappy farmers out there. Yeah, and that was probably just a way to appease the dairy and meat farmers of Canada a little bit by getting their products still onto the guideline, but kind of hiding them inside the recipes. And what we've kind of alluded to already, you know, vocabulary like mindful or processed or healthy, they're used vaguely and sometimes used out of context. And not everybody kind of understands what that means. People don't know what healthy means necessarily so choosing a healthy fat you have to kind of keep pressing buttons and dig really deep down into the food guide to see what they suggest and then when you get there you know for healthy fats they're really recommending a lot of oils right safflower oil and all of these vegetable oils you know even even thick ones even the ones like margarine like solid ones a lot of these instead of instead of lard instead of butter instead of all of these other options. So 
you kind of have to look at it as where are you coming from? If you're coming from a place where you're eating whole food, plant-based, no oils, no sugar, and you see the food guide and it's recommending oils, I think at this point, after hearing all the doctors and us on the show, you know that that's not necessarily the route to take. However, if you're using butter all the time and you're using lard all the time and you start to replace those with more vegetable oils, there can be an improvement in your overall health. There can be an improvement in your overall cholesterol and and other things and even weight loss. And I think it's a journey for everybody. And as they find more information, it's still up to you to find so much more of this information. So as you find more information, you can make good choices, but it is a little bit upsetting going to see what they recommend for healthy fats. And yes, there's avocado there. Yes, there's nuts and seeds there. And then there's fish and then there's all of these other, you know, oils. So it's a little disappointing, but so much better than where we were before. I I think we should talk a little bit about why Canada has moved to this route like why did they go more plant heavy and I know we've talked about it before and the reasons behind it but since we're talking about the food guide on this show I think it would be important to discuss a little bit why Canada went that route why are plants so much more important these days well I think that Canada went this route because of the advocates that are there and that are trying to make a difference. So I want to applaud everybody who had uh, a hand in that, you know, people like Animal Justice, so many different organizations out there that were really moving towards this, whether they're coming at it from a point of let's save the animals or let's make everybody healthier or let's just do both at the same time. Or save the planet. Or save the planet, right? Like all of those things come into gear here. But the, the food guide does mention, like I said before, that Canadians are dying of heart attacks. Our cardiologists are dying of heart attacks. There's recognition that types of cancers are linked to processed meat, right? So processed meat being class one carcinogen by the WHO, uh, World Health Organization, and red meats being classified as a group 2A carcinogen you know, in humans, probably in humans, not just in animals, you know, these are the types of things that have been brought forward and a recognition of the growing breast cancer out there, colon, rectal cancer, all of these things that are happening, the government can't turn a blind eye to it because it's there in black and white. It's just there. There's little evidence that calcium is actually making our bones stronger. There's some evidence that it's leaching it from our bones and making us weaker. We're pushing dairy, 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 yet you can't get a bed in convalescent homes and rehab centers because everybody over the age of 70 is falling and breaking hips and getting knee replacement surgeries and all of these other things. So, you know, what is it? Why are we so overweight? Why are our bones so frail when we're eating so much dairy. There's research to support why, and it's been brought to the government's attention, and they took action. Yeah, and it's about time. So, you know, when we look at some of the results that we've seen on this podcast with people who have become plant-based and what they've been able to achieve. And, you know, we look at some of our clients, you know, losing over 60 pounds, less pain in their hands and able to make lunches again, getting their cycles back when they have PCOS and, you know, losing weight and hormones being balanced again, coming off of insulin and pain medications, less anxiety, you know, reversed heart disease, shrunken tumors sitting right here in this room, you know, the, the things that we've been able to witness firsthand, not even from these stories and transformational stories that we talk about and the doctors that we talk to, but like things that we have helped each other do, Adam and I, and that we've helped so many of our clients do and so many of you out there who may not, you know, who may never even come in contact with us or send us an email. We know that there are people out there who have made changes because of this podcast or other podcasts like it and have had amazing results because eventually people do end up emailing us in. It's just, there's no reason not to try it. There's no reason not to try it. As long as you're getting enough food in, as long, if you've got, you know, if you've got certain issues, certain things may need to change, but the general guidelines for eating a plant-based diet and what you can achieve from that is huge. Yeah. And what I love most about this, I mean, it's nutrition month, we're in March and we're talking about nutrition and the food guide came out not long ago. And I have people coming up to me asking all kinds of questions on how they could incorporate more plants. And this has really brought up conversation. 
and the food guide talking about eating more plants has really forced people to rethink, relook at the foods that they're putting in their mouth. And some people are realizing that what they put in their mouth makes a direct impact on how they're going to perform, whether it's in fitness or in business or your levels of sleep or whatever activity you like to do, your production, your performance is going to get better with you putting better foods into your body. And as we focus not just on food, but on lifestyle, the whole package just becomes such an important piece that we need to continue to share and continue to explain. And I just love that people are are asking those questions. Yeah, and I think that those questions are coming up. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. So, you know, help help me, please. I think that this is a really great opportunity for people to start to learn more and some ways that they can do that is just start making simple swaps today right like if you really normally make a ground whatever chili you know start using more beans or use lentils try different types of lentils because different lentils have different consistencies or dryness to it so you know try out chili bean recipes instead of so things that you're used to eating on a regular basis just expect it to taste different say this is a new kind of chili it's not my chili it's a new kind of chili but you know just swap out the meat for the legumes or try using soy milk or water in your smoothies instead of using cow's milk or yogurt not just in your smoothies but if you're someone who drinks coffee every day or tea and you use milk or cream in those drinks try using a different type of milk, one that comes from soy, from almond, from oat, from hemp. There's so many different varieties of plant-based milks that you could try to use rather than the dairy. And they each taste a little bit different. I prefer coffee black, so I don't put anything in. But if you're someone who's used to having cream or milk in it, try changing it up a little bit because that could make a big difference in the way you feel. So Adam's dad has been living with us for the last couple of months as he recuperated from spinal surgery and he couldn't have his milk and his coffee here, of course. And we went through a whole bunch of different plant-based or vegan coffee creamers, you know, not the healthiest. They've got some sugars in them and, you know, some oils in them, but he went through a whole bunch of different ones until he found the few that he likes. And then those are the ones that we buy. So And they come in small little cartons. So just because you don't like the first one that you try doesn't mean that you're not going to necessarily like the second one. Plus, by the time you're done trying them all, you're going to forget the taste of the milk anyway, and you're going to be used to them also. So keep trying them if you haven't found one that you like yet. When you're making things like stir fry or tacos or anything that might use strips of meat, you could try using organic tofu instead. So instead of chicken and instead of beef, you know, try try incorporating some of that instead or some of the marinades that you used to use on some of the meats. Take the liquid out of the tofu by, you could press it or you could just put it in a fresh dish towel, a clean dish towel and wrap it up and let it absorb all the water out of it and then marinate that tofu in whatever marinades you're used to. And it, it might, you know, it might have a different, consistency but it might have that same homey flavor that you're used to so you might enjoy that and if you're used to having meat in your stir fry there are so many plant-based meat companies now that you make alternatives to meat that help with the transition and make it easier for you to still get similar texture and flavor than you would the meat and it's a much better alternative that's going to help guide you in the right direction of moving away from using animal products So when we talked about saturated fats earlier, they come up a lot. So how can we choose less harmful fats? We can say, you know, on your toast, if you're used to cream cheese or something like that, you can use nut butters, you can use avocado. So there's different options. Of course, there are, you know, those faux cream cheeses, and you're not going to have the same kind of inflammation and all you'll get with regular cream cheese. But at the same time, it's not really healthy unless it's like a real cashew base, you know, like if you're just buying those ones that you buy in the regular grocery store, they're not very healthy. So try nut butters and try avocado for dipping. We love hummus, but there's all kinds of, you know, spinach dip and tzatziki dip recipes out there that you can make plant-based and vegan as well. There are so many different options and ways that you could add more plants to your lifestyle. And of course we have a whole bunch of recipes at planttrainers.com slash recipes 
Some of them are super simple. Like I can't even believe we put some of them up there. They're so easy. <laughs> some of them have two ingredients. Some of them are a little bit more complicated, but you know, there's something out there for everyone. And of course, there's lots of recipe books and other resources that you could use. But ours are pretty good and we use them. So in celebration of Nutrition Month, we would love it for you to go to Plant Trainers on Instagram, go to Plant Trainers on Facebook or on Twitter and join the conversation. We're going to be putting up a lot of great content about Nutrition Month and the food guide. So be part of that conversation because when you share with others, you can really make a difference in somebody else's life. Or if you need to make a difference and keep make that difference be sustainable in your own life, making it front and center every day is really going to help you get there. So if you haven't already followed us on those platforms, please do so. And don't be shy. Use your voice. And eat more plants, drink more water, and move your body some more. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans. It really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers. Even supporting us with $1 really makes a difference in the quality of the show and don't forget to connect with us on instagram and twitter our handle is at plant trainers like plant trainers on facebook join our newsletter and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes a list of our services and of course our latest podcast we encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness so we hope we've inspired you today join us again next time and and have have a a healthy day. Where's that too corny? It's a little cheesy. <laughs>